It's just after Thanksgiving. And uh, Thanksgiving wasn't too bad. I went off my diet, but not, you know, Thanksgiving, it's normally a full day of eating shit, right? So you wake up, or I wake up, and there's just crap there, and I eat it, right? So it wasn't that bad. We went over to my in-laws, um, and they had, uh, they ordered in Thanksgiving from like a personal catering company, from a family-run catering company. And so, and it was delicious. It was really good. Um, much better than I can cook. And I cook a good Thanksgiving dinner, but this was really good. But I went off my diet because I had, you know, it had mashed potatoes in there, had stuffing and all that kind of stuff. Um, and also, I don't really like turkey. I'm going to be honest, it's just boring. I don't dislike it. I just, I can never imagine ever craving turkey. I crave chicken, so it's not, it's not that it's foul. Hey, <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I went off and I also had some Hershey's chocolate, which by the way, I mean, that's a sign of an addict if you're eating Hershey's, <laughs> if you're, if you're not American and you're eating Hershey's, that's a food addict right there because Hershey's chocolate is so shit. It is just terrible. And everything Hershey's touch turns to shit because they bought out Cadbury's, right? Was it M? I don't know. An American company bought out Cadbury's. And they make American versions of British chocolates, like Kit Kat and stuff like that. And they're all terrible now. They're just awful. Even the Cadbury's cream egg, which is still tasty, has lost, like, the fondue in the center. is just It's just sugar paste now. And it used to be, like, this really nice fondant and just delicious silky cream. Now it's just sugar mixed in with liquid sugar. It's just, I don't know. Um, but I had some U- U- Hershey's Kisses which were horrible. God knows why I did that. And then yesterday was Friday and I was off my diet. I can't remember what happened, but I wasn't on my diet. And I kind of made a deal with myself. I'm like, okay, well, I guess Thanksgiving is two days this year. (laughs) You naughty, naughty. And then um, today I woke up and I'm back on the diet. Had my burgers this morning, my homemade burgers, smashed burgers. I'm going to have a couple of eggs or I've had a couple of eggs. Take my pills, back on the diet, drinking the water. Let's do this thing. So I'm hoping at the end of Thanksgiving week, I can have uh, gained no weight. That's the goal, is that the last two days of eating shitty, I can just eliminate that and not gain any weight. But I don't know because I prob- I knocked myself out of ketosis, I would think. And so that is the weight loss method, right, on the carnivore diet. Um and so it's going to take me a few days to get back into ketosis. So we'll see. Hopefully my um, my appetite goes down. My st- stomach shrinks again. And I'll lose weight just by just not bringing in enough calories. But after this morning's breakfast, that is definitely not the case. I had burgers and eggs. And it was delicious. Right back on the horse. You know what you do is. All right. So I'm back on the diet after a few days Thanksgiving off. I don't know where we're at now. What day is it? Today's Monday. I don't know what day that is. Is that... I don't know. I'm halfway through the week. Uh, I've been good for the last three days on the diet. Um, Getting really bored of it. And I think the thing that's kind of boring me is the fact that um, I can't quite figure out how to make ground beef so it doesn't go into the sickening area. You know, like when I was on the potato diet, there was a point where I was just so sick of potatoes. And that was only seven days. I was just so sick of them. It like started to make me feel physically ill thinking about eating them. Um, and I tried multiple ways to cook them. And the, 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 I ended up with the best I could do was with the roast potatoes. But what happened on the potato diet is that I slowly but surely started adding more and more oil. I mean, it was never a lot. It's still just, it was just a spray of oil. But the point is, a spray of oil is more than no oil. And I got a comment on YouTube. Someone said, um, hey, don't do the oil, you know, and try spices. I think garlic, they said. And I tried that, and it did indeed work, and it was a really good reminder. But again, I started... The last couple of days, I'm like, it's a little bit of oil, it's a little bit. And it was just something to make me not feel physically sick at the thought of them. And I'm starting, just starting to feel that way about the ground beef. Um, and unfortunately, on the carnivore diet, there isn't really much else I can afford. I can afford eggs. 
and I can afford cheese. But, you know, cheese is not great on this diet. It's like an exception. Um, but the ground beef, like the beef burger patties, getting bored of them. Um, I mean, maybe I need to go back to, I used to make hamburgers with um, Lipton onion soup in them, like the powder. Um, because whatever the spices are in that Lipton soup's delicious. The hamburger's really good. I mean, I could go back to that. It's not carnivore fully, but I mean, I have to look at the carbs in that. But I mean, it's you know, it's I'm still going to lose weight on the diet. But I just I could do steaks every day. I think because you know, I still love the taste of steak and I love the taste of beef. I'm just ground beef. I'm just bored of. And I've stir fried it in a pot in a wok, and it's just it's a little better, but not really, because really what I want to do is add a ton of Worcester sauce and some tomato paste. <laughs> you know, I want to turn it into something. You know, or at very least like an onion gravy, so I can have like a a minced beef and onion pie without the pastry, right? Where it's literally just minced beef and that beautiful kind of stock that you can make with it, like a thick gravy. That's delicious. I can eat that for a long time. Um, But I need to cycle through a variety of recipes with the ground beef. And right now it's just patties and last night some stir-fried ground beef. And the only reason I did it last night is because it was going to go off. I'm like, I've got to cook this stuff. What am I going to do? So I'm forcing it down myself, but I'm starting to feel like, oh, man, this is driving me nuts. This beef. So I don't know. I've got to break it up. Um, I'm still doing the chicken. The chicken's good, but, you know, I don't know. I'm still with it. I'm still with it. I think I maybe need to loosen up the reins on myself a little bit, which I know is a statement that every addict's ever made before they crash and burn. But I am very hard on myself. Like, I'll give an example. On the Atkins diet... The induction phase of the diet, the first two weeks, you're supposed to have under 20 grams of carbs a day, right? And that moves you into ketosis and you start burning fat and then you can loosen up just a tiny bit. Well, firstly, I never left the induction stage whenever I was doing it. And I did it for months at a time sometimes. And the reason I never left that stage is I always felt like cheating and I beat myself up about it. I'm like, oh, that's terrible. Worse yet... 20 grams of carbs felt like cheating to me. So I would try and do zero grams of carbs, right? So I'd try and do absolutely no carbs whatsoever. And I would be very hard on myself if I had one or two grams of carbs, well within the limits of the diet, but still feeling like I'm cheating. So I do have a tendency to be that way. So I think maybe I need to loosen up a little bit in order to not blow the diet. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course it does. Um... Like maybe in the way I cook it, I don't want to add vegetables, I don't want to add onions, but maybe something like adding some different spices or maybe I can cook it in some cream, Fred some things. I also have this bone broth and I keep reading about how bone broth is the thing you need on this uh, carnivore diet, but I don't know what the fuck to do with it. The only thing I've seen mentioned of it is drinking it like it's a tea and that the concept of that disgusts me. Maybe I just need to get over that and like, yeah, dude, it's fine. You can drink it as a tea. Really? It's bone? Uh, anyway. All right, midweek. I've got to weigh myself in a couple of days' time. I don't know. I don't feel very good, so I don't think it's going to be great. I think um, the damage of Thanksgiving is still lingering. Um, but, yeah, I just thought I'd do a midweek check-in. Yeah. Well, I fucked up again. Um, He's got to be getting old seeing this. Anyone who's still watching this shit. Um, Yeah, so... Again, another two days of being... Three days of being good on the diet. And then uh, last night... At about 6.30, 7 o'clock... I was so fucking bored... (laughs) <laughs> and it's it's I don't normally get that bored I mean I do I can get bored but I, I normally have methods for getting around it but nothing nothing was working 
Nothing was working. I didn't want to play any video games. Didn't want to watch TV. Didn't want to read. I didn't want to do anything creative because God, I haven't done that for weeks. So I was just totally bored out of my mind. And it's part of the depression. It's part of all of that kind of stuff. But everyone's going through this right now. Everyone's going through the similar feelings of hopelessness, right? So, but the end result is I was really fucking bored. And uh, we went out and got donuts. Now, this time was my fault. I said to my wife, I'm going out for a drive, which is our code talk. I'm, I'm just going out for a drive. And she knows it's our code. It means we're going to go do some damage. Um, I didn't actually know if I was going to do damage at the point I said that, but I think that's me lying to myself. I, where was I going to go? You know. But I was really bored. I just had to go out and do something. And I needed some, frankly, I needed some joy. I wanted to find some joy, and it's very sad to say that the joy I get is from eating, but that's my truth at the moment. That's why I'm a, an addict. But uh, we went out, and we went to Krispy Kreme, because there's one pretty close. It's only, like, I think 45 miles away or something. So, no, it's not. <laughs> but it's, it's a drive. I mean, it's, like, I don't know, six miles away or something. I don't know. It's, it's a drive. So, we went out to get Krispy Kreme. Um, I would have gone down the road for donuts, but... You know, once we were committed, Laura's like, no, 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 I'm, we're doing Krispy Kreme. We're going all the way. So we went there. Laura had two donuts. I had four. Um, normally, it's the other way around, actually. She, when, when it gets it comes to donuts, she can, she's, uh, she's a trooper. <laughs> but I outdid her this time. And here's the worst part about this story. Uh, it worked. It's fucking terrifying. But it worked, like... We went to get donuts, and on the drive to get donuts, I was happy, right? Or, or upbeat. I don't know whether happy, that's pretty deep for it. But I was kind of uppy, pre-sugar rush, kind of like excited about it. Uh, by the way, did you know there's been studies that say that sugar doesn't change your mood? And like in children, it doesn't make them hyperactive, it's just joy. It's fucking bollocks. <laughs> sugar still makes me hyperactive. Anyway, so we're going to get sugar. I got the pre-sugar rush which is obviously not chemically, it's not, not to do with eating sugar, but you get excited about knowing you're going to eat sugar. We get there, we order them, we drive back, we're eating donuts on the way back in the car, and uh, I just feel really happy and really upbeat and really positive, and we're being playful with each other, and we're laughing and we're joking because of donuts. <laughs> and then the sugar rush actually hit which is just kind of chaos and my mind's kind of bouncing all over the place but just in general felt really good and happy and then uh, we watched uh, a little bit of a movie and then after about an hour and a half we both sugar crashed so we went to bed and slept great <laughs> I just wish all of that stuff didn't make me gain weight because <laughs> you know ugh, it's so annoying but guess what? Back on the diet. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to have lost any weight this week, right? I, I can't see how I can possibly do it. I, four donuts. <laughs> it's not. Is there a donut diet? You know, I'd read somewhere that if you eat one of anything, effectively it will be a diet because you'll want less. And you know, but is that true of donuts? Is there a donut diet? And if not, why not? Donut with a you know, one centrum in it. There you go. They were good donuts, though. All right. It's time I put a video up. Um, I've been AWOL for a few days. Uh, <laughs> and the reason is I haven't been good on my diet, and I felt embarrassed. Like, the whole purpose, the whole purpose of making videos about me going on a diet was an accountability thing right? It's like, well, I'm saying to people I'm on this diet, so that's going to help me uh, stay on the diet. And to some extent that works. But the thing is that when I break it, like I have done, I've, I've been back on the diet for two days, but I spent a good part of three or four days of just eating crap, right? Uh, and gaining weight. But the problem is during those three or four days, um, it's so easy to not be accountable because it's YouTube, I can just turn it off. Um, so that's why I haven't made videos, but I've been back on it for two or three days, and I, um, I got to try and muscle in. So uh, I didn't weigh myself today. I haven't weighed myself for a few days because there's no point. I know I've gained weight. So, 
but I'm going to weigh myself tomorrow and get back on it. So uh, this is all going to be in the same video. Tomorrow, I'm going to weigh myself and then I'm going to do a little after weigh talk about what happened. And um, yeah, struggling with uh, admitting the fact that uh, when it comes to food, I'm a fucking mess. I have no control. And uh, it gets embarrassing, you know. I'll give you an example as well. This is like the, the into the mind of an obese person. Uh, you know those little skin tags you get? Like sometimes you get like a little tag of skin. Everyone gets them, right? Well, you can get them taken off, right? They, is it liquid to nitrogen? They freeze them anyway. They freeze them and then they fall off and they disappear or they snip them off or whatever, right? And people get them, sometimes you get one or two. Well, I've got one under my arm right little one it's not this big gross thing it's tiny tiny little one uh, and laura's got one so she made an appointment with the local dermatologist who you go in it literally takes like 30 seconds you go in so she's made an appointment for next week and i don't want to go and the reason i don't want to go is i have to take my shirt off in front of someone and um that's just just so embarrassing to me <laughs> And it's so ridiculous because the dermatologist has seen God knows what. I mean, everything. And couldn't care less, right? It's just doing their job. But I feel grossed out. I feel like, God, I'm so sorry that you have to go through this. That you have to sit there and be close to my shirtless body. I'm so, that's an awful thing. Like, I'm just so fed up with that feeling. So fucking fed up with that feeling. Um, I just went through my closet, um, clearing it out, trying to, look, you can see, actually, you know, you can see... <laughs> I threw a lot of stuff away. I threw away all the stuff that doesn't fit unless they were like expensive stuff. And then I'm going to bag that up. Like I got some shirts that were a few hundred dollars. I'm obviously not throwing those away. But I threw out a ton of stuff. I'm trying to do clear outs. Trying to get the energy to, to kind of get back into my life a little bit. And the diet's a big part of that. And I'm so fed up with that feeling of just wanting to disappear. Um, that's how you sum it all up, just wanting to disappear. So that's why I haven't made videos. That's why by the time you see this, it will have been, I think, close to two weeks since I put a video up about my weight. All right, next video is me weighing myself. All right, time to weigh again. <clears throat> this may not be pretty. Seems how I can burn my... Oh, wow, wait a second. Hang on. Is that right? Jesus Christ, what's it doing? Did that really say that? Oh, okay. You know what? I thought I'd done a lot worse than that. Yay. So not as bad as I thought. Um, you know, I had a bad two weeks. It's been about two weeks since I last did a video. Um, and the Thanksgiving week was one of them. And it was pretty bad Thanksgiving week. But it wasn't terrible because... Previously, I have, when I go off the diet, it's chaos, right? It's a food addict, so, you know, I binge and I eat all the wrong crap. This time, I was still feeling like I was on the diet, so I was, it was keeping me in check. If I had something, it was making me feel, I was feeling guilty and it kept me in check. The problem is, this diet is the weight loss is through ketosis, right? So your body burns fat instead of burning carbohydrates, but if you give it carbohydrates, it will say, oh, no, we'll, we'll go back to burning the carbohydrates. And the fat that you ate that day and the next day or however long, it's just fat. So it's even more fattening. You really do have to stay on this diet. I'm sure there's a tolerance level there. Like you can have a tiny amount of carbs and it won't knock you out of ketosis. But the point is the carnivore diet is about eating meat, eating fat and eating protein. It's really about eating fat and some protein, <laughs> right? So if you don't do that, then you're not going to lose weight. Um, so I was off my diet during the Thanksgiving week, not as bad as normal, but bad enough that I assume I was gaining weight because of the nature of the diet. But then the last four or five days, I've been back on it and I've been pretty good. And uh, I weighed myself as you just saw. And um, I think I got away with it a little bit, actually. So it's encouraging. I'm going to stay back on it. Something I've noticed over the last two weeks is that if I'm not mindful about the diet, um, that's when I tend to get really bored, right? I need, when it's so easy that I'm not even thinking about it, like it doesn't require my attention, then, okay, 
So if I want to stay on my diet, all I need to do is I need to have some ground beef and some chicken wings and some chicken and some lamb and some pork and some meat, whatever, and a bit of bacon and eggs and butter and all that. Just have it in the fridge and then try not to eat until I get really hungry and then cook it up and that's it. And I'm not really thinking about it. I'm in, I'm trying to get into the food is fuel, right? But I don't think, I think I'm trying to run before I should walk there. Food is not going to be fuel to a food addict in three weeks of trying to diet. It's just not. It's going to take me years to break this habit. So instead, I think it works better when I'm really mindful about what I'm eating and I'm pursuing a goal that isn't just weight loss, but it's a more keen observation of what I'm eating, right? And accepting the challenge of how can I do this rather than don't think about it, just put food in your mouth, don't think about it. Because that doesn't work for me because the moment I do think about it, I want to eat some shit, right? Today's a really good example. Today, I had every reason in the world to cheat on this diet, right? Not just cheat, fuck it up entirely. I'll give you, an exa- I'll give you some examples of what we did today. We went to uh, the mall today because we had to pick up some gifts from JCPenney. Uh, Laura wanted to find a special gift for someone, a special from JCPenney. But I hate the stores. I hate the mall. So while she was in there, I was just standing out in the forecourt, right? And it's empty. There's no one there. The old, but all of the food places are open with no one there. It's very weird. And it's early. It's like 10.30 in the morning. So they're all cooking. So I can just smell all of these foods. I'm literally, I'm 10 feet from Baskin Robbins. I'm 10 feet from, uh, what was it, Mrs. Fields Cookies. And they're baking their cookies. And then there's Wetzel's Pretzels. And then there's the Annie's, whatever that, Annie's, what is it they do? I don't know, Pre- Annie's Pretzels? Anyway, whatever, the Annie's thing. And then um, Cinnabon and uh, there's a fried potato place and there's just food everywhere, all around me, right? And I just, I'm standing there just saying, nope, nope, not going to do it, not going to do it. I went up and I'm looking at what they have. And I went up and asked, like, what is this? Is that like a hot dog in a pastry thing? And they're like, yeah, yeah, those are good. I'm like, okay, okay, I'm just going to go look. And I walked up and down and just managed to talk myself into not eating it until Laura came out. And then when she came out, she's like, I'm hungry. I, I really got to eat something. What can we eat? And I'm like, well, I'm, you know, I'm doing my special diet. She's like, I feel like a taco. So I said, why don't you go to Cadoba? Because it's right there. Now, I really like Cadoba. I think it's a really good fast food taco. I mean, it's just a fast food taco. It's not like a proper taco place where you get an amazing taco. But for a fast food mass uh, restaurant chain, I think Cadoba is really good. I love their tacos. It's the taco I would choose. Um she got three of their tacos, she got the brisket, she got the chicken, and she got the, I think, the carnitas, and the carnitas one in particular is delicious, and uh, I didn't get it, didn't get anything, just sat there, we went outside, because you can't eat in the mall, and I watched her eat this taco, and I'm like, nope, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it, and I'm not, not doing it, we get in the car, she says, I want ice cream, she's like, fuck it, i blow my diet, I want ice cream, let's go to McDonald's, so we go to McDonald's, we stand in line, we get to the, the order radio, the, the whatever, what, what would you like? And I said, do you have do you have any ice cream? They went, no, the machine's broken. And I said, okay, we drove away. I didn't get anything from McDonald's, which is amazing for me. <laughs> and then she still wants ice cream, so we go to a Mexican ice cream store in Inglewood. And this place is unbelievable. It's a huge ice cream store. It's like Baskin Robbins on steroids. They have tons of ice cream and really unusual ice cream and sorbets and crepes and all of this stuff. It's an amazing find actually when we when i'm eating ice cream again i can't wait to go there it's got all of this stuff better than any ice cream store i've ever seen she gets like three scoops of ice cream really unusual flavors i don't get anything and then we get in the car we're driving home we're done and we pass a uh, uh, a store a market a grocery store that says fine meat so i'm like oh i want to go in here while you're eating your ice cream so i go in and it's a butcher And I go in and I say to him, oh my God, dude, I've been looking for a butcher for ages and no butcher around here. And I tell him about my diet and he's like, yeah, I can totally help you with that. This guy, his uh, name was Mr. Candy, Senor Candy. He was a Mexican butcher, Senor Candy. He said, I've been doing this for 50 years and yeah, I'll help you, whatever you want. So he says, try my carnitas. So he gets me a little thing and he gives me the carnitas. He says, what do you think? And I try it and I'm like, oh, this is amazing. So I order some carnitas. I get some ground tri-tip because he didn't have any chuck at the time. He said, but try making a burger with this. It's really good. Add some fat. And I felt that connection to what I was doing. And that made me realize, I think that's why I'm doing a little better in the last few days. That moment right there, that, that 
thought, the reason I turned down all of those other fo- foods is because I had a goal that day that wasn't just don't eat that shit. It was, let's see if I can find some uh, butcher. Let's see if I can find a better cut of meat. Let's be mindful about the kind of protein I'm putting in my body and what the fat content is. Like really engaging in the diet rather than trying to eliminate and think of food as fuel. I think the food is fuel argument is something that happens many months into this diet. Hopefully, I don't know if it ever will, but if it is going to happen, it's not happening right now. So I need to go the opposite way. And actually think food is of paramount importance. And everything I put into my body has to be considered. And I think that worked today. Now, I don't know if it's going to carry on, right? Because I thought similar to this before and then gone out and got a fucking ice cream. um, Or more often a, a Twix bar or something. But I felt today that that attention to detail was what made the difference. It's what stopped me from going off my diet. And I hadn't eaten for... By the time we got home, 16 hours. That was a, that's a long fast for a fat bloke. <laughs> that's just a long fast, man. So I was really hungry. Like, I couldn't stop thinking about food hungry. And I'm sitting there watching someone eat a taco in front of me. I didn't touch it. So, I don't know. I feel good. I feel like I got away with it. And maybe I got blessed by the way in today. I'm very lucky with that. <laughs> very, very lucky. That probably helped keep me going. Because I'm making this video, like, hours after I weighed myself. Because I ran out of time. So maybe that kept me going as well, but either way, I'm still going. Carnival diet, it's been a bit rocky, but I'm still on it, and, you know, it's not a one-shot thing. This is something I think I've got to try doing for the rest of my life. So even if I fuck up, back on the diet. All right, you little nuggets. I'm going to post a video for the first time in ages. Bye.